Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible out and turn to Isaiah chapter 27. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It's really a shame. I, um, I think my old microphone, the one that finally quit uh, about a year ago, I think the sound was better on that than the new one that I have. Uh, and I actually paid more money for the new one because I was listening to some of the old Bible studies and I thought the voice was a lot more clear. Uh, but that's the way it goes. All right, let's go read Isaiah chapter 27. And we're going to take a look at a couple of things. Verse 1. In that day, what day? The day of the Lord, the day of Christ. And uh, sorry, pre-tribbers, but the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is the same day. Unless, of course, you want to deny that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine. Then you can say the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different things. But uh, I say it's the same event, and it comes at the end of the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. But... Hey, that's just my opinion, and was the opinion of the church for, oh, I don't know, 1,800 years. Verse 1, in that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Levithion, the, uh, the piercing serpent. Even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. All right. So, what is this serpent? Well, let's take a look. Turn to the book of Revelation. How about Revelation 12 and verse 9? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Huh. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All righty. Verse 20 and verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay. How about Revelation 12 and verse 15? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water water as a flood after the woman. Now, it is my contention that the woman is the church, the bride. So, Revelation 12, 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. All right. So, what is the, this waters, uh, water that comes out of the mouth of the serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan? What is, you know, Satan open up his mouth and there's a water hose, a fire hose? Well, what's up with that? Well, guess what? The answer to that is Revelation chapter 17. So, we're going to read that before we get started on the rest of Isaiah 27. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay. With whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth 
have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit with a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman, well, this is a different woman. This is a whore. We're not talking about the bride of Christ here. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, there's another verse in the Bible that says that Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Babylon was the first great world empire. So it was a physical empire. But now it is a spiritual empire. So, so verse 4, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Verse 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. Ah, the angel's going to tell you the mystery of the woman. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Perdition means to fall. Um, Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there's people whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? But the church teaches that everybody can be saved. Well, maybe they've never read this verse. Or maybe they're hiding something that they don't want the Lord's sheep to know. Do you know the Lord has enemies on this earth? Physical and spiritual enemies. They don't want you to know that either. They want you to think that, well, you know, everybody could just love Jesus and they're going to be in heaven. Jesus told the disciples, Have I not chosen ye twelve, and one of you is a devil? Speaking of Judas Iscariot, oh yeah. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And everybody's quick to point out Rome is on seven hills, seven mountains. And indeed it is. But guess what? So is Jerusalem. Verse 10, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, 
but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Yeah, I believe that those that believe in Christ, the Lord of lords and King of kings, are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. I think those people are the chosen people, not the people that deny Jesus, but the people that believe in Jesus. Verse 15. Here's the punchline. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Did you catch that? The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, Levithion, the serpent, is, my opinion, the devil and Satan. And the, the serpent of the water, well, there are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Let's go back to Isaiah 27. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Levithion, the piercing serpent, even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the serpent that is in the sea. Isn't a sea waters? Oh, yeah. Do you know that Levithion could actually be the name of the devil? Satan? I mean, everybody says Lucifer, but Lucifer is kind of a title. So, verse 2. Isaiah 27, verse 2. In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment. Lest any hurt it, I will keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I will go through them. I would burn them together. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. He hath he smitten him as he smote those that smote him, or as he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him. In measure when it shooteth forth, Thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. Wow. And this is all the fruit to take away his sin. When he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in sunder, the groves and images shall not stand up. Now, uh, the groves was a place where Satanists and witches used to do their worship and sacrifices, human sacrifices. And what are images? Well, that's you're talking about idols. You know, the golden calf that uh, they worshipped? Oh, yeah. Verse 10. Yet the defensive city shall be desolate, and the inhabitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed, and there shall he lie down and consume the branches thereof. When the boughs thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire. For it is a people of no understanding. Therefore he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. See, those that come to the Lord will be safe, and those that rejected the Lord, well, 
they're going to be burned. Verse 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. Ah, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. So what's this trumpet being blasted? Verse 13, It shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Well, contrast that with 1 Corinthians 15.52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. First Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. All right, people, that's the end of this study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him. In Jesus' name, amen.